Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is Cinematic Suffering. This is our first interview we've had on the show, and we've had uh, lots of episodes, including old episodes from a couple of years back. But uh, uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, Mike Kusiak. Is that is that correct pronunciation of your last last name? Uh, Kuchak, but Kuchak. yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll hold it again. It's it's Polish, so the spelling and pronunciation <laughs> have very little to do with each other. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, dude. I really Thank appreciate you. you coming on and making some time. Uh, so, uh, I guess you know we're we're here to talk to you primarily about the, uh, the your movie that came out the, this year called Death Metal. And, yeah. And it's it, we've watched it. Clay and I are now so closely associated with this film because we've probably watched it between us twelve times. And I, that's wow, yeah, I've, really. I've watched it. Jeez. I've watched it a minimum of yeah. Because what um, you know, I don't want to make this about us, but just just kind of give you some background. Like we, mm-hmm. pro, the genesis of our podcast is that we originally were doing an A to Z horror kind of approach. Like if it's mm-hmm. if it's on Netflix. We're just going alphabetically down the down the alphabet, and we're going to watch them. And it became so laborious to do that because we were watching them. <laughs> right. Yeah, we were watching the movies independently, and it just we didn't have that. It was fun when we finally got together to talk about it, but it was like homework mm-hmm. leading up to then. And so I was like, well, let's just watch the movies in real time. And inevitably, it turned into an MST3K riff tracks rip off. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what it evolved into. <laughs> and um, your movie was the second one that we actually sat down and wrote a script for so that we could oh, wow. time I'm it out. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, like, hopefully you like what we did, but. um, (laughs) I I can't wait. I'm I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Well, and I mean, and I was telling Jason this totally earnestly. It was like, you know, the more time you spend with a movie like that, the more you kind of grow to love it. I'm sure we'll get to a point to where we'll get to a movie to where we we hate it as much as we (laughs) love this one. But I felt this way about... um, the first one we did, Devil's Island, and I feel it even more for for uh, for death metal. I honestly found more to like about it the more times I rewatched it. So I genuinely did like your movie. It's not just uh, it's not just fan service because you're you're gracious enough to come on the show. We really did. Right? No, well, I, I I appreciate it, man. I and uh, you know we hacked this thing out of the wilderness, and uh, <laughs> and and now that we're uh, it's done. It's released. It's like, watch it, please watch it. We, we made a movie. Yeah. Go watch it, please. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but before we get into the nitty gritty of that stuff, I, I, I just wanted to go back a little bit and uh, see if you could like give us like a, a, a history of how you got into horror movies. Like what, what maybe have been your first love for it? Um, what was maybe your first uh, real uh, B movie that you, you, you saw? Uh, so, well, I mean, I, I think like a, a lot of Gen X or type people, uh, you know, the foundation is the classics, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, you know, Romero, la, 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 la. Right. Uh, but I really got my, it, it really got its hooks into my brain because I was a big fan when I was a kid of Son of Sven Gulli. And he was kind of okay. in Chicago. He was the local, like Elvira type guy where, you know, right. Joe Bob Briggs where, you know, he puts yeah, on I've a, definitely heard outfit. Of him, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and um, I that that was like the high point of my week was was Fenguli, and uh, I mean all like a lot of them were fifties black and white uh, creature features, but there were all there was also a lot of Amicus in there, um, a lot of Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, like like weirdly enough, like I uh, Fenguli gave me like kind of a, a broad uh, appreciation of, of films from a you know variety of eras and countries you know um but yeah it's like you know from there you know i just you know became the weird movie kid <laughs> you know for from that point but it, it wasn't just horrible it was mainly horror you know yeah so, yeah, yeah I, 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 I was just gonna ask yeah, you because I, I, I can't i can't really uh for me i i can't remember like the first horror movie that i ever saw so i was just seeing if you had a better memory than i did <laughs> Well, I, I, I will give you a really early memory is uh, my my mom wasn't super into horror movies, but she had a specific love for The Shining. And uh, when The Shining first came to VHS and was rentable, 
Uh, she immediately rented it, and she, I, my, my parents were actually somewhat laissez-faire about like the kind of stuff that I watched. I, you know, we were sure. sitting around and watching pornos and whatnot. But it's <laughs> like, uh, you know, but like, you know, uh, it, if they would, I, I watched a lot more R-rated movies than like a lot of my friends did, if that makes sense. So oh, uh, I, I totally relate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like I, I, even when I was eight years old, eight nine years old, I was watching stuff like Conan the Barbarian, The Shining, that that to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like I have the distinct memory of of my mom being like, "Okay, Mike, this is a really scary movie. There's one really scary scene that you're gonna have to run up to your room and hide in. And when it's over, I'll call you back down. And of course, you guys could probably guess what uh, scene it is. But uh, the bathroom scene. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's like yeah. the, that was when it's just like you know, my mom knew the movie, and she's like, "All right, well, most of it is fine for this eight year old child, but maybe not." Not a that noodle part. woman. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, so Mike, you have to run up to your room, close the door, I'll call you back down when it's, cause, I mean, otherwise it's so scary, la la la. It's like, uh, which yeah. is, I mean, the, these days it's just really funny, but, you know. I think that that scene would be more scary for um, any boy that's gone through puberty because it's kind of like this is what <laughs> happens to the human body as it ages. All these, <laughs> all these yeah. hills and valleys get more hilly and more valley. <laughs> Goodness, I, and, and that's a movie that I, you know, I've watched more times. I've had hot meals, and uh, one of the more interesting viewing experiences I had was uh, a couple of years ago. I was, I was visiting my family for Christmas or the holidays. And I uh, watch it with my aunt, who's you know 69, and my my cousin's son, which is nephew, second remove. I don't know. And at the time, he was like I want to say 17. Mm -hmm. So a uh, mature woman and a teenager, and they neither one of them had actually watched it before. So oh. I was able to not only watch the the movie, you know, for the millionth time and enjoy it on that level, but also to get their perspectives. Like uh, you know, the teenager was was like, oh, that's where that meme is from. <laughs> yeah, that, that was his yeah. main main point of reference, and uh, you know, my aunt actually had some uh, some cogent uh, observations about the film. Like when Danny comes down the hallway and he stops by the room, and the door is ajar, and gets up and walks the doorknob, almost goes in, decides not to. Da 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 da. My aunt points out she's like, the only reason that scene is scary is because of the music. If you took the music away, you're all you're looking at is a little boy looking at a doorknob. Right. I'm like, yeah. you know, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, so, no, the, the but, sound uh, design for The Shining is just uh, amazing. I mean, there's so many great examples of seeing, you know, like Danny uh, riding his trike uh, down the hallway and the, the sound of yeah. the wooden hard floor hitting the carpet, you know, the whoop, silence, mm, whoop, whoop, silence. And it's just Kubrick was a, obviously a genius when he did that. Um, yeah. You know, who's probably at the top of the game with that? right now is jordan peele uh you know i was watching yeah. Nope. yeah i mean you know especially after having gone through the process of both um the death metal specifically but also right on the heels of that we were also mm -hmm. you know up in the studio doing post audio on shadows and so uh you know i kind of had sound design in my th firmly thrust in my head so now i, I watch movies through that prism Right and uh, yeah, Nope is you know on, on like most horror movies are at least good, but Nope is on another level. You can tell okay. that Jordan Peele is like really thinking about uh, sound design. Yeah, that's nope. still on my list of things to see. I, I've seen. Oh, you haven't us. seen it yet? No, I've seen Us and I've seen um, Get Out, uh, but I haven't seen Nope yet, so it's still in my queue. I desperately want to see it. Nope, yeah, is really, one of those I movies really that it. just got into my brain. Like I watched it and I, I I went home and I thought about it. And I'm like, I know it was a good movie, but why did I like it so much? It was just one of those movies that had so much going on that you just it really sunk your teeth into it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, talking about the, you know, getting into writing movies was was death metal like the first original idea about how you had or was this something that's been brewing for a while did you have other things <laughs> your hands and other little pies before this uh, i have um I, you know without going down the rabbit hole of my career but i i've been working in the entertainment industry in one form or another for about 20 years now mm -hmm. i moved out to la in uh, 2002 and i was a uh, creative executive uh i started as a creative executive at a management production company. I worked my way up to senior vice president of development. And uh, it was a boutique uh, management production company. And uh, yeah. I left that to hang my own shingle. And I repped writers for a while. And the entire time I was writing. Um, 
and I always had screenplays that were almost always getting made. It was always, uh, we've attached this talent, this director, this piece of financing. And they were always like sand, you know, and, and that's just the nature of the beast is like, yeah. you, you build these sand castles and 99 times out of a hundred, the waves rushing and knock it down and every once in a while. And, but, uh, so they're always like these big action movies, you know, like yeah. car chase movies and martial arts stuff and, you know, sci-fi things and that, 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 that. And, I uh, I reached a point where I was like, you know, I ultimately I'm not getting any movies made. We're almost mm -hmm. always getting movies made, but no actual movies are getting made. Like I was yeah. shooting shorts and that was instructional. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to make a movie. Uh, right. I'm, I'm past the place where I'm asking for financing or talent or da 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 da. And the original intention from day one was to direct. Right. Uh, you know, the thing being is like you can't direct every day, but you can write every day. So yeah. I, my decision was I'm going to write every day. I'm going to write my way into the director's chair. You know, I've uh, got, but I, and that's what I originally went to uh, film school for was directing. Right. So, um, so I go to film school, get a degree in, get a degree in directing. I come out and I do a whole lot of not directing. I'm just writing every day. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just cranking out tons and tons and tons of spec scripts. And uh, finally I get to the place. I'm just like, I do uh, fuck this bullshit. I'm just going to make a movie like right now. And uh, I had a piece of money and, um, uh, one of my producing partners, a guy named Ian Holt, he was on a radio show with uh, Dan Guchmitz, who is a uh, composer, and he's got a music studio in Ohio, and that's that, that, that. And yeah. they got to talking, and Ian mentioned um, that I was looking to make a horror movie, uh, you know, on my own dime and on my own, you know, gumption. Yeah. And uh, Dan's like, "Well, hey, tell you what, I've got, uh, I've got a farm, and I got a recording studio." Nice. That's awesome. So and, that's your connection uh, and, to Ohio, then. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I had never even set foot in the state until I went there to make a movie. So right. it's like, I, I imagine my surprise when it was a massively pleasant experience. But so I, mean, uh, so I, I connected with Dan. I flew out to uh, his place and looked at the locations, and then I came back and I wrote a script. And the script itself, uh, the g core genesis idea was like, uh, I want to say like you know, a million years ago, back when I was playing bass in punk rock bands, right. uh, one, one of the demos that we cut was in this really old building in Chicago, mm -hmm. and it had survived the Chicago fire. And it was kind of like a really creepy kind of building. Like if I wasn't actually in the booth laying down my bass tracks, I would wander around. I'm like, God, this is like, you know, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if this place right. was wanted? You know, a haunted recording studio. Wow, man, we, we haven't seen that before. And uh, I didn't have the means to turn that into a movie at the time. I just kind of threw it into the mental filing cabinet and right. you know, la, la, la. And then when I was like, all right, farm, recording studio. Huh, okay. Because another CD that we cut way back in the day, we recorded at the engineer's, um, the engineer had his stuff set up in like an old, like his family's fishing cottage in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So the idea of like a band recording an album in this very rural, very like you would never think that there's a recording studio in the basement yeah. of this fishing cottage. I'm like, aha, that's how we're <laughs> going to do it. It's a farm. You never look at it in the basement. There's a recording studio. Guess what? The recording studio is wanted. And uh, I went, I, I, the original idea was that the farm was haunted, that there was a, um, uh, like an atrocity there and the ghosts are going to give the band a hard time and la, la, yeah. la. And that felt a little uh, soft. And I thought, well, you know, let, let's do something a little bit more like the ring where it's just like uh, they get a piece of, of evil music or, you know, something about, you know, let's make the metal more a part of this movie, death metal. So right. it's like, it's not quite death metal if it's just like a death metal band and they happen to be haunted. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's like calling a movie uh, punk rock, and it's only called punk rock it's, it's because the people who get eaten by the werewolves are punk rockers. You know what I mean? Right. It's like a, you know, Return of the Living Dead isn't called punk rockers. It's called Return of the Living Dead. If that yeah. makes sense. So it's just yeah. like the haunting oh, has to, yeah, the haunting has to come from the death metal. That's why it's called death metal. So uh, I, I, uh, I. Here's the thing: is uh, people uh, like to accuse me of ripping off uh, Deathgasm uh, is a oh big God, one. No. Sometimes, some, no, sometimes do you, so, well, wait, 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 put the bricks on that. I, I hear about Deathgasm a lot. I've actually never seen Deathgasm. Uh, lately, I've heard uh, a few more references to Studio Six Six Six. I've actually never seen that movie either. Uh, I am ripping off 
a movie. And, but, <laughs> but it is uh, Daria Nicolati's Paganini Horror. Because yeah, okay. here's the thing, is if you draw an idea from a recent movie, then you're ripping it off. But yeah. if you draw an idea from an older, obscure, non-American movie, then you're a cineast. Who is drawing <laughs> on your then you're a influence. goddamn genius. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. You're precisely. So, I, I will, so yes, I, 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 I am ripping off a movie. It's just not that big. <laughs> I will say that uh, the, the only thing I, I would ever closely compare it to, and I, I haven't even seen Studio 666. I, I've seen Deathgasm. I've seen Deathgasm. It, it's nothing, you know, it's not even close. It, it was okay at best. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I would say rock, John Michael Thor's Rock and Roll Nightmare <laughs> Uh, where the band goes out to this uh, a secluded location to record an album, uh, mm -hmm. but the devil is there. It's literally the devil is there. And uh, John, Mike, I, I'll, I'm going to ruin Rock and Roll Nightmare. By the way, have you seen Rock and Roll Nightmare? By the way, you've never. Yeah, seen I mean, it? It, it, it's been a minute, but yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So it turns out John Michael Thor. And if you haven't seen it, if anyone's listening right now, just stop the and you want to see. Alert. Rock, <laughs> uh, he's an angel fighting for god and the epic battle between god but you know it, it, it totally <laughs> goes off the rails but that that's what it reminded me of and i was like oh this is it felt like an homage to that but um in a way it felt like an homage to i, I would say uh, uh, uh lamberto bava's demons from 1985 oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, I, I you know besides uh drawing the core concepts off of an italian movie uh, it's also uh I mean, there's a heavy frosting of italian influence on it like, like the core oh, yeah. of the cake the cake is og evil dead uh yeah. but the frosting is italian and um i've noticed that like uh recently uh you know some filmmakers will kind of draw influence from italian genre filmmaking but it's always argento's lighting schemes they're sure. uh, very rarely I, I don't see anybody lifting off of uh, uh you know Lenzi or fulci uh the motto you know and uh yeah. you know, well fulci is is kind of the the heavy one in this one so it's like you know right. we have live live maggots rats you know uh shoving the camera into the gore you know stuff yeah. like that so yeah you know, I, I if you're familiar with fulci and then uh when i had the conversation with um david greathouse who did the amazing practical effects on this film um who i actually just saw a couple of days ago he happened to be in la yeah. um nice. But we had the conversation. I was, you know, he's like, "What are you looking for?" I'm like, "OG Evil Dead." So I mean, don't it doesn't need to be perfect. It, it can, it, it should feel a little handmade, a, a little bit backyard, you know, a little indie movie, midnight movie, rock and roll, you know, kind of thing. And also give me Fulci if you can. So if you look at like when the eyeball comes out of the guy's head, it's very Fulci. Oh, that I, but, I was gonna yeah. say that's that's yeah. the most palpable kind of. Poor uh, homage is the the eyeball torture you know? right I, I mean that's the thing is like it, it, the movie was created to be a midnight film it's i what i'm aiming for i don't know if i hit it or not is uh early peter jackson in the sense that uh a million you know I mean, again a million years ago uh, a friend of mine and i uh, we used to just go to the video store and just rent stuff off the covers and right. we randomly rented uh bad, bad taste, taste? Yeah, and yeah, and um, loved it obviously. And like, uh, time goes by, and uh, he calls me up out of nowhere. He's like, Hey, man, uh, did you see in the Chicago Reader the guy who made Bad Taste made another movie about like some guy taking care of his zombie mom? It's playing at midnight, <laughs> it's, it's playing at midnight on at, at the music box. Do you want to go? I'm like, I, yeah, of course. So, you know, after that, you know, two in the morning. Uh, that audience staggered out of the theater like they had survived a plane crash. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Know? And uh, like, that's what I was going for is a movie where it's just like, you know, when, you know, the eyeball gag and the rat gag and the floating head gag and that's that, that, I was giving the audience gags where it's like, what am I watching? You know, so it's <laughs> like, you know, because, you know, uh, we've the seen a million movies where people get eaten by zombies and chopped up by galoots with knives and that's that to die. I mean, sure. nothing against that. That's all fine. But it's just like, let's, Let's push the envelope a little bit. Let's get weird. And yeah. if you want to get weird, you look at Italian horror. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. I was. Um, I haven't gotten through it yet, but I was watching that uh, uh, documentary on 
uh, Shudder. Um, oh God, I'm blanking on the name. It's this epic documentary on Shudder about horror movies, and and they're I'm right in the spot right now with the with mm-hmm. Italian maestro. So it's it's it definitely hits home, and you can yeah. definitely see the influence in in death metal. So yeah, yeah. I, that, that's the thing is like the wonderful thing about and here's kind of the other the uh, core idea slash influence from Italian horror movies to death metal is. Uh, Italian horror movies, more than any other, um, I mean, outside of Japan, I would say, uh, there is a nightmare, a nightmare logic quality. Um, you know, if you watch Italian, you know, uh, uh, American horror movies, it's uh, the ghost. There is a ghost here because the ghost was killed, and the ghost is mad. And these are the rules. And if the if you hear the knock, ghost knock three times, then you have until midnight to do the thing. And that's that's that. It's all very. It's I, an escalation. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, no, it's all very like it, it. It all plugs together. It's it's like a it's like a machine. It's like yeah. I mean, cinema at core is uh, the use of technology to create a shareable dream, and a horror movie is a nightmare thereby. Uh, and you know, so for that reason, uh, there are elements within Italian horror where it's just like a, you. Know, why is that happening? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's scary. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, if you look at if you look at Deep Red when you know the the doll on the tricycle comes crashing through the door, I mean, how the where the killer get that doll and how she set it up and that 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 it doesn't matter. It's scary. Shut up. Yeah, it's scary. Is it just, <laughs> right? Is it? Well, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it makes it's, no it's like sense a is why it's scary. Right. Yeah. It's like you know, it's nightmare logic. I mean, and don't get me wrong. It's like a, there actually is a thought process behind behind it every choice on the screen in death metal i don't kind of i i play a little fast and loose with explanation but there is a logical thought process behind everything in that film and uh but i did take the idea from italian horror movies that um you don't have to explain everything to the audience so long as they're scared and entertained it's like a comedy if like if the, the audience laughs then it's a successful comedy you know, it's like, whoa, well, he couldn't do that. That doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, you know, shut up. Go go home and watch fucking sports. You, you, know? gotta, little, you like, gotta have a little suspension of disbelief, you know? That's yeah. You, yeah. You know. I, I need a tired, weird, baked audience watching a dude's eyeballs fall out of his skull. <laughs> That's where I'm at. That's my bullseye. Yeah. The right the right people will find it, I hope. I mean, like and, and I get so frustrated with those those kind of normies. Like I've recommended movies to people. Like I made the mistake of recommending I don't know if you've seen Aronofsky's earlier film Pie. It's one of his first yeah, big yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. Um I recommended that to the wrong person, somebody that likes lifetime movies and she never let me live <laughs> it down. And, and well, I mean, the more you know, it's frustrating. It's like, oh, I hated it. It's like, yeah, but you suck. That's the reason that you hate it. You know? Well, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, um, you know, you, you like what you like at the end of the day. It's like, you know, I mean, not everyone, yeah. not, I mean, not everyone likes Skinamarink, for instance, but uh, I saw it. I, I, I really enjoyed Skinamarink, but I don't feel the need to watch it again soon. You know, yeah. uh, I, you know, it doesn't feel like a comfort food movie to me in the same way that like say Evil Dead 2 is. Um, but like right. I, I, I saw like I remember when um, Blair Witch originally came out, the deeply divisive movie. Like I stood in yeah. a line that went around yeah. the block because at the time in Chicago it was only playing in two theaters. I, I stood in this massive ass line to watch it. Immediately, got out of that theater, ran and grabbed two of my friends, and I'm just like, "We're going right back. You got to see this movie like right now." But about fifty percent of the time, when I would talk to people about that film there's always the worst thing ever it goes <laughs> going it looks so stupid it doesn't make any sense it's like well i mean you know i mean at the time I'm like well you don't get blah blah but it's like in these days it's like well I'm, you know i'm not gonna yell at someone for not liking my pizza t- toppings you know it's like you know right you like what you like yeah whatever yeah, yeah there's I, a... I mean, similarly it's like i you know death metal is such a hyper specific uh, a musical form. That's what I was that it's say, like. Yeah. It's it's analogous to the horror community in the sense that, like, you know, for instance, uh, with death metal, it's you you know, you could go to you know see Devourment play this little room at on a Wednesday night and it's raining and like you walk in that room and you know like out of eight million people in Los Angeles count that three hundred psychopaths that no matter what are going to go see fucking Devourment no matter right. what. Uh, are going to be in that room. It's just like, yeah, there is that sense of like, 
you know, uh, when, when you know, play, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> no, it's it's, you know it's well, yeah. I mean, uh, w- w- yeah. when you see when you see uh, death metal, the, the the movie, or um, we, I'm I'm a very big fan of horror slash metal combo movies. Uh, we've we've reviewed several of them here on mm-hmm. on Cinematic Suffering, and. Uh, I don't know why. It's just something we've been gravitating to more. And uh, when we saw Death Metal and I saw you putting it out, I was like, oh, we should check this out. Um, because, you know, it reminds me of like old, uh, not that your movie looked like this, but a uh, uh, shot on video stuff that I saw, like Death Metal Zombies from back in 1995. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some other uh, heavy metal centric movies that are out there that say they're heavy metal, but, you know, they they fool you and then you watch it and there's like one little chunk and the rest is this boring uh, horrible right. plot um but yeah yeah uh, i think uh, death metal stays on course with that and kind of blows a lot of that stuff out of the water i mean it, it's it's got its faults don't get me wrong i mean there's stuff we're like hey this is some crazy stuff what is he doing here but at the same time the more we watched it the more endeared we got to it and the characters that are involved your, your actors um shifting just a little bit here um your casting process, I'd like to know. I'm sorry, I'm going into the nuts and bolts just a little bit. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, yeah. Because I, I'm curious where you found these actors and uh, if the actors were, you know, were they horror fa- fans? Were they metal fans? Uh, or, you know, was this, you know, a cat, not a cattle call, but, you know, an open audition where people just came in? Well, I mean, I, I, again, I, I had never been to the state of Ohio uh, until I went there to make a movie. So I, it was literally, I got off the plane and I'm like, all right, Ohio. What do you got? You know, uh, and with uh, death metal, what I did was I pulled up. I am. I'm like, well, all right. Here's what I'm going to do is uh, for one thing, I'm going to make it a SAG production. And uh, you know, in, in in New York and LA, um, you can sometimes you know, with a, a lower budgeted you know independent film, you can usually get away with uh, non SAG mm-hmm. because there's such a massive pool of actors that like if you sift long enough you'll find good people yeah. whereas like you know with ohio i'm just like you know I, l- let's just cut to the chase let's just make it a sag production so i know like going in i'm like all right i've got skilled experienced talented people that's it right um, what are really actors and not fucking around is that kind of right yeah okay. and um yeah uh, I, I i i x amount of time between i'm like the movie is going to shoot on june 1st and i have to, i have x amount of time to get this movie made let's not fuck around let's just go straight to the good actors you know yeah. uh, right, right, not, right. To, not, not to disparage non-union talent but you know what i mean so uh what i did right. was i sat down i sat down with imdb and i looked at what are the last five horror movies that shot in ohio and yeah. uh, i looked at you know i was looking at common names i'm like uh you know who is part uh, who is clearly part of the local production scene so like i was looking for like first ad's second ad's uh, casting directors and i found one casting director who had worked on like bye bye man and carnal house and one other thing and uh i hit her up hey i'm making a little in a horror movie in northeast ohio are you available she said yes she pulled together the entire thing and for me it was just sitting there in the room with uh you know dan Guchman came along uh mm-hmm. you know because we, we you know he came out as a producer uh and also a composer but um it was sitting there watching everyone come in and i'll tell you uh, there's something weird about the casting experience process whatever you want to call it is uh every i've, I've been in that was, position by the way yeah oh okay uh, so i uh you yeah might as a director why. too yeah just a small film yeah. that i worked on but you might understand what I'm about to say is like yeah. everybody who is in death metal was cast almost as soon as they walked into the room. Okay. Yeah. You know, instantly, uh, Oh, like, Oh shit. You know, like that's uh, my Anya. Could you, could you, was it was that yeah. quick? Like, yeah. Uh, like E Ray, E Ray Goodwin, the guy who plays Fleming. I mean, he yes. walked into the room. Yeah. He, he walked into the room with a, with an ax over his shoulder I'm just like, oh, dude, all you have to do is not suck in this year. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is like, for instance, with Anya, um, played by Caitlin Newberry, uh, I saw, I, there were several good Anyas that, that read, you know, uh, oh, she's a six, she's like maybe a 7.5, she's like maybe an eight. I mean, in terms of talent readability, like I had like three or four like good Anyas to kind of choose from. And then she came in and just, 
swept the board. I'm like, right. oh shit, that's Anya. And uh, and on top of that, it's it's not only talent; it's also um, you know a certain like can do, let's rock kind of attitude. Because uh, yeah. I, I asked I asked Caitlin, I'm like, listen, if you get this role, I'm gonna t- drag you out to a farm in the middle of nowhere. I'm gonna dump fake blood all over your head in, in the middle of the night. And she was like, awesome, cool, let's do it. I'm like, okay, poof, done. <laughs> Sold to the American. Right. Um, the the only uh, person who wasn't cast w- didn't go through the casting process was Shadia Martin. I, I wrote the the part for her uh, because I just shot a uh, a short called Sweet Sixteen that she starred in, and uh, her and uh, Sarah Gorski, who is um, she's one of my producing partners on From the Shadows. Anyway, so um, so I. I Talk to Shadi. I'm like, listen, I I need like kind of an ingenuity, you know, lead here. Yeah. Uh, can I talk you into like flying to the middle of of rural Ohio and shooting this movie? She's like, yeah, sure, yeah. Like, it's, I, yeah. I I already knew that Shadi had the, that kind of let's rock can do fuck it let's do it kind of thought process. Yeah, Shadi so, seemed like an extremely talented, especially you know when she busted into that song on the oh ukulele. My God, yeah. I was like, "Holy shit, dude! This is yeah. amazing!" It's a ukulele <laughs> song about zombie, ap- the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. There's so well, many great little moments in that, you know. I know. I, I she um I, I originally asked her to uh to demo out Hammer Smash Face because I mean that's kind of the go to yeah. Cannibal Corpse song. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, uh, and she she did, uh, she she did as good of a job as you can on ukulele with that tune. But it is like, but it is like, it, it's such a like weird. It, it's kind of such a weird time changey kind of movie. Or, yeah, doesn't uh, lend itself so to you. That le- yeah, I, I started. I, I was looking at other songs that felt a little more sing alongy. You know, because like as much as we all love having our smash face, it is a classic for a reason. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel really like a campfire song. You know, a campfire song, you want a big chorus to sing Go along ahead. with. Because that's, you know, because, you know, that's the joke. Because normal people, when they do a campfire song, it's, you know, that, 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 you know, like, some, you know, buy my American pie, you know, shit like that. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Or whatever, you know, it's like when if, uh, if a death metal band sits around the campfire and they play a little campfire song, they're going to play the songs that they like, right? So yeah. that's that's the joke. So it's like, but it also has to be a serviceable campfire song. So I kind of leans toward Killer Become, I mean, not only because I like that song a lot, but yeah. also um, it, it, it's simpler, you know, uh, and fire up the chainsaw we were singing we were singing we were literally singing along together uh by the third time we had watched the movie we were singing along to it and and you she and she i I, you shot even mentioned she was like yeah i'm I'm glad that you decided to go in that direction because it's a lot simpler tune to to transpose over to ukulele and just a single singer and johnny just brought along his harmonica he just started doing that it's like all right okay (laughs) Uh, like even yeah. better you know it's like these are the presents that your your cast will give you uh if you let them you know um, right so yeah it's... and and it was it was a really fun warm moment of the movie and it was one one of many that i liked and and one of the the genuinely many things that i like about death metal is that uh it, it kind of peels back the whole facade of death metal because any any of us that have been kind of friends with with musicians or in the scene long enough know that it's it we're all they're all carnival barkers we know it's it's an act that's why we pay our money to go see these things we know it's theatrical and yeah uh, it's one of the things that i loved about death metal is that it got right into that it was like this is th- these are the failings of these people this is the struggle yeah. that they're having and and no, they're not axe murderers. They're, you know, like the like Baphomet making the terrible decision to to, <laughs> to, to change his name legally to Baphomet. I fucking love can I it. can I point out one of my favorite things uh, is uh, one of the lines was when they're asking him what his name was and he said Baphomet and I think Chuck uh, the basis for incantation. Um, he's like, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I was just I, rolling. I, I, I should point out uh, two things. I not only is Kyle a huge horror uh, fan of the product, I mean that, that's how Incantation got involved. But so is Chuck. It turns out. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Kyle is the guy who like goes to the the, the uh, you know goes to the festivals 
uh, sells merch, does the entire thing. Like he's up, uh, you know, up to his neck in yeah. the horror community. And he actually, um, he made a horror movie his own called uh, After Party Massacre. I was going to ask you about that because Gravehill, Gravehill did a song on there. Um, That's going to oh, be really? Right. That's the hey, next one. I've yeah. got a copy of it yeah. right here. With the <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we. Are, and, I was uh, going to ask you if you knew Kristoff and uh, and everybody yes. over there because yes. uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely did. Uh, we did a cover of ACDC's "If You Want Blood," and it's on the oh, soundtrack right. for After Party. Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, I know Kristoff because he is one of the two guys at the merch table. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a Paul John and Christoph Bates. And I uh, uh, sadly, but <laughs> I, I actually, the next uh, scheduled public screening of Death Metal is at No Class in Cleveland on September the 10th. And we're actually doing a double build feature with Death Metal and After Party Massacre. And oh, uh, that's going to be a blast. Yeah. So Dude. Christoph is going to be there, I'm sure. I, I, I've been uh, training with him about, you know, he's working on the poster, right? You know, the one sheet to get it out there. And right. uh, there might be some merch. I don't know. But um, I, you know, Kyle might be there. Uh, I, I'll see if any of the local cast and crew can make it out. You know, well, yeah. uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to make it out. Um, uh, I actually have another movie coming out next month. And I, uh, I, 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 have to, I have to put that hat on soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I so is it coming in, out, or are you? Is it coming out? Or are you writing it? Or are you producing it? No, or, yeah. no uh, I wrote. I, I, I wrote and am a producer on, but did not direct a movie called From the Shadows. And uh, we actually made that movie in New Jersey in 2021, and it's coming out on September 22nd. Okay. And uh, it stars uh, Keith David and Bruce oh. Davison and Selena himself. Andrews. Yeah, and um. No, um, uh, Keith David from uh, uh, They Live and The Thing, and um, yeah, yeah, but he, yeah, he spo he voiced Fawn, and uh, yeah, it's kind of oh, oh, yeah, voice, <laughs> uh, yeah, in, in, the, in the live action movie, it's uh, uh Michael I. White, but, um, it's, right, 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's uh, Shadows is actually getting a theatrical release, uh, five city theatrical release, along with uh, six if you count the LA uh, uh premiere, so. Uh, September is going to be kind of that, that's where I'm going to be at. So I'm, I'm kind of yeah. I'm doing all the that's death awesome. metal stuff now. I'm doing the death metal push now. Please watch death metal now. So <laughs> when September rolls around, I can put on the shadows hat. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I watched uh, the but, sizzle reel today. That was it looked great. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, that that one was a lot of fun. But I mean, I, again, I I I just wrote that and just produced. Uh, it yeah. was part of the producing team, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, um, but uh, you know that that one's. Uh, I would say whereas the death metal is, you know, more midnight movie Italian uh, influenced horror movie style. Uh, Shadows is uh, a lot more Lovecraftian, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. So sure. it's a little more mysterious. What's going on? You know, creeping tension. You know, interdimensional yeah, interdimensional beings. You know, all that. So. He's scratching my Lovecraft itch. So. Oh, nice! Very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely I'm a good like, itch to have. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let me let's go back uh, to production. Um, how uh, when you're actually filming? How long did it take you guys to film? Uh, production. The core of production was 13 days, and then we did about three days worth of pickups, and then after that. Uh, you know, I, I came back to Ohio and we did some more pickups and then like throughout the next year, like I was constantly like, you know, luckily my DP James Bizarro, uh, is very much behind the project and very generous yeah. with his time and effort. So, uh, you know, even when I was in post, you know, I, I would hit him up and like, you know, James, I need a shot of this. Um, yeah. and also by a, a wonderful twist of events. Uh, Shadia Martin and Nico Zanas are both uh, moved to LA. They actually moved, live like a mile away from me. Oh, awesome! So I was able, to, yeah. So I was able to uh, grab them. Yeah, I was able to grab them and be like, okay, I, I need to get you guys for a day, and just like little inserts, like Shadi, I need you to look left <laughs> and then right. You know, right. just like you know, just little patching together, like you know, uh, just just eye lines, you know, in, you know, quick cuts, you know, stuff like that. Like we sure. did the stuff where um, you know Nico is like in a, a, a neutral space and he's saying the names of the other band members who he's selling off to the darkness in exchange yeah. for immortality. 
Like we we knocked that that stuff out. He was like, "Hey man, you know, uh, I, I'll yank off my shirt and I'll be crazy." And I was like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> so you know, um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it was kind of a production was kind of a piecemeal process over the course of I don't know, maybe nine months. Right, right. Yeah, I know it's I know it's a hell of a lot of work. I mean, uh, I I did a short film that was filmed over a weekend, and that was stressful in itself. And I I, I was also a PA on uh, another horror film, but uh, that was extremely uh, uh, lengthy to get through. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a lot of hard fucking work. And I know we we yeah. on some movies that we've re- re- reviewed on here that. We go into them pretty damn, pretty damn hard, uh, mm-hmm. but we do it. Do we do acknowledge that there's a lot of back breaking work that's in here? Not just you know yeah, lifting yeah. and stuff like that, but a mentally back breaking, you know, that goes into that. So I'm glad it didn't break you for one. No, uh, I, did I, it ever I, come <laughs> close? <laughs> well, I, 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 yes, in the sense that I uh, here's exa- I'll, I'll I'll tell you the story of post production because that's the more nice. interesting tale is I. Uh, uh, I shot the movie out and I was running out of money. I had about exactly as much money as I needed to run it through post. And by that, I mean, you know, post-production sounds, you know, color, you know, la, 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 get it down sure. to QC, something that was really, that would be releasable. Um, and uh, what I did was I sat in a hotel room in a La Quinta Inn in Macedonia, Ohio, drunk and exhausted. I slapped together, <laughs> like any cut I just slapped it. I'm like, okay, this kind of makes sense. Ran it through the entire post-production process. And I had in hand a movie that was technically releasable. And by technically, I mean, in technical, you know, QC terms. Sure. Um, but I took a beat and I watched it. And I'm like, this is terrible. Oh my God. What have I done? And oh, uh, my God. Producer, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my producer it's partners so like, panic inducing. Yeah. Well, I mean, my producing partners was like, Cooch, you you can't put this out. I'm like, I know. And it's like, yeah. So so Blair was like, Well, what are you gonna do? I'm like, Well, I, I don't have money. What I need is I need money to redo to redo the cut. I like I, I could redo the cut, but I wouldn't have the money to rerun it through post sounds, color, that's a, you know, effects, everything else. So uh I took the I mean, even though like I had no money in the world. And if I just put out that version of it, I would have gotten some money back, but my career as a director would have been strangled in the cradle. That would have been yeah. it. That would have been yeah. the one and only movie that I ever, oh my God, you know, you're never going to hire a dude who made that cut of the movie to do anything, right? Yeah. Um, so it was one of the toughest choices of my life because it's like, if I don't put this out, then what, what is there? I have no money. And basically I just, I, I, don't, I don't know what comes next. So uh, but I, I, you know, there's nothing else to do. So uh, I just started looking for uh, post-production financing. I recut it and recut it and recut it. I spent 2019 recutting it again and again and again until wow. I got to a place where I'm like, oh, okay, now I, I like this version. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was looking for financing all the way through the production of Shadows or the pre-production of Shadows. And then like out of nowhere, one of my producing partners, Michael Alden, he hits me up and he's like, hey, coach, uh, I know this woman who is interested in um, financing post-production death metal. And mm-hmm. I, he knew her through, like, uh, it, you know, he also does, like, Broadway. He does plays. Oh. I'm like, and documentaries oh. about, like, social issues. You know, uh, you know, children who are struggling with health problems mm-hmm. kind of things. I'm like, all right, so, right. listen, I mean, not, not to look the gift horse, but why does this woman who, like, invests in, like, your stage plays and do good or documentaries they have, won't have anything to do with my my crazy midnight horror movie death metal <laughs> she's like well she had a son who played in a death metal band oh and okay. he passed and he passed away and she wow. will finance post-production on death metal if you put his music into the movie and make it a memorial to him and uh uh you know at the end do like a little this is dedicated to you know kind of a thing i'm like yes ab- yeah i'll i'll name the fucking movie after this kid that doesn't yeah yeah. <laughs> but, that, so, yeah that explains that song in the credits doesn't yeah. it uh, yes yeah. exactly and it's like you know I, you know sometimes in like in television you'll see like at the end of an episode this episode dedicated to xyz yeah. kind of person you don't really see that in the feature but it doesn't matter i it's like you so i'm like yes I, so 
Uh, her only stipulation was that I uh, come to New York and stay at a building in a building that she owned and do it at this one specific uh, company that she trusted called Buttons, uh, mm -hmm. run by Rich McCarr. And to uh, I'm the, like, to, yeah. to do the editing or to, to do that? Well, I mean, the editing was me. I'm right. talking about the the technical stuff, uh, post production sound, right, ADR, right. color, you know, FX, everything else. You know, okay. the things that I, I I did not have the hardware to do. Uh, so okay, like okay. Uh, I I I did edit. Uh, Rich and I did sound design. Um, a lot of the sound the sound design in there is me like just kind of yanking random things off of libraries and squishing them together. Yeah. Um, running them through schmutz but uh yeah so i mean <laughs> three months through three months in new york uh we finally got this version done and then i connected with bayview and Bayview put out the movie and here we are talking about it but uh, it's 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 that's a dude, fucking that's, harrowing experience dude. it is <laughs> yes. i mean it's yeah like and I mean, it's like it, and you it's like you you can you did your dream man and that's uh that's well, that's amazing and, and that's and that's the thing that that kind of you know uh, sticks with me about people that are often on our side of the equation the people that are the, on the critical side of it is they never ever tried to actually make a film and they have no clue about what is actually involved in it and, and <laughs> you know yeah. as creatives we we try to be very kind of empathetic and sympathetic about that you know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that, that kind of thing is like I, I, I once read an interview with uh, John Carpenter where uh, he, he said that he never watches his movies because all he sees are the mistakes. Yeah, right. And like, I, I mean, at the time, I, you know, that blew my mind. I'm like, how could you not want to watch a John Carpenter movie? They're so good. But <laughs> they now, live. I mean, God damn, you need to watch. Yeah, but, you know, very similarly, like, I, you know, I, I, you know, watching Death Metal. I mean, it's fun when I'm watching it with an audience because I can enjoy it. With people who haven't seen the movie before like uh we we actually just had a screening at the Duncan film festival in indianapolis uh weekend before last and that was great like three dozen people showed up and uh and for a midnight show for a movie that i knew nothing about had never seen i was and and they they really dug it uh yeah. like afterwards like a lot of people were it was like it's that it's really good i didn't know what to expect <laughs> it's like i really like uh signed a bunch of copies uh, handed out after sinister t-shirts the entire thing but uh my point being I, I i watch that movie and all i get out of it now is just like oh there's still a goddamn light in the frame <laughs> <laughs> no well, that's it and, that, yeah yeah, what are you and, saying, Clay, and, yeah and we make we you know like we we tease you like and you'll you'll see it when you see I don't, the, uh, the like, riffs we we tease yeah. you about a lot of that same stuff but it's okay. also the reason that we love the movie and um yeah. You know, I don't know if you're a fan of High on Fire, but like when I heard High on Fire's first album, I, I was like entranced by it and I saw so much like awesome raw potential in it. And that's that's kind of how I feel about death metal. I think that there's going to come a point where people are going to say like, man, you interviewed this guy like he's the next, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know I, and Dude. similarly, it's like I... I... You know that that's the thing is like I and th this is a movie that like I literally born of chaos. It's like we had X amount of time, X amount, a number of dollars, and if I were perhaps smarter, I would have made a smaller movie with that time and dollars. But I, you know, the joke that I kept making on set with James and also Great House um, was I'm like, you know, at this budget level, the horror movie that you get is usually like two girls in a house going like, ooh, I heard a noise. And it's like, and we're here, like, we've got demons, we've got decapitation, right. gore, that, that, that. Cool cast, like, a, a really yeah, we're, robust cast, you know? Yeah, it's like a great cast. We open with incantation on stage right. at the Agora. It's got way more uh, production value that you would assume for a budget, a, a project at this budget level. But, um, you know, I, I, my thought was, let's shoot high, and stumble you know and let's have some some kind of frayed edges around it and let's and it'll just be like an early punk rock album where it's yeah. like i am you know like uh, oh, and yeah. it, that example. might sound yeah and that might sound like me forgiving myself for my own shortcomings but you know the funny Not thing about the, the fun thing about directing versus writing is like writing you can kind of go off and suck in silence for 20 years and then finally you you figure something out and go wow what a brilliant screenplay <laughs> and no one has seen the other 19 years worth of 
scripts that were right. not good. Yeah. Whereas with directing, it's like learning how to play guitar on stage in front of a crowd. Like everybody in the world gets to watch me learn my lessons. <laughs> uh, and it's just like, and that's fine, man, because I mean, that's just the nature of the gig. It's just yeah. like, all right, well, I mean, if I didn't want to do it, I would have fucking gone to school to do it. <laughs> Come <laughs> no on, shit. man. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, I, yeah. And so, I mean, yes, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am the first guy in line to, to make fun of stuff about the movie. And it's just like, I mean, at the end of the day, I am the guy who wrote, directed, produced, and edited <laughs> So it's like anything that is on that screen that is make fun of it, it's it's all me, dude. It's like, but and I, I'll point out shit that you haven't even noticed. I believe me. It's like, <laughs> well, and, 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 and I mean, it. we like, you know, we tease. And I think that this, this goes for horror fans in general is we laugh at the stuff that we love. Like I, you know, like the misfits, the, the, especially the 20,000, the, the 2000 era of the misfits is dumb it's objectively dumb but you still love it and that's kind of how i look at horror it's it's you you laugh at it while you you love it and appreciate it so. you know i you know that, that was my thought is is again i'm just like it's better you know i i, I originally played in punk uh I, I was a bass player in punk rock bands and nice you know that uh that diy ethos you know just you know if you want to be a band great start a band or, or you you want to put out a record great start a la start a label i your basement you know, you want to play a show? Great, book it. You know, it's just like you know, oh, you want to go on a tour? Great, get a vehicle, yeah. get your shit together, hit the road. It's <laughs> like you know that very like if you want something, if you want to see something in the world, go out, get your get off your ass, go out, and make it. Right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, if you suck at guitar, it doesn't matter, get better. You know, yep, but start precisely. playing now. You know, it's like you know, uh, oh, you suck at songwriting. All right, write some more. It's like you know, it's like that core idea of like I wasn't gonna let uh, you know perfection be the enemy of good or getting something done i'm just like i'd rather make something that is flawed now uh i mean again because i'm coming after 10 plus years of almost getting these big car chasing kind of movies made again and again and again like uh i we would get close enough that we would have start dates oh yeah like on october yeah. 6th we're gonna go to production i'm like oh boy great my mom's crying she's all excited <laughs> then you know Falls apart. Oh, oh man! You know, it's like yeah. I can't imagine, ask, you know, dude. I really can't. yeah, but I can't imagine but the, the level of disappointment in that moment. But I mean, well, I mean, the first time you ask, I, I mean, as with anything in this life, you, you ask, all right, well, does this beat me? And if the answer is well, no, and it's like, all right, well, what, what does that look like then? And so it's just like I, and it was that same thought process. It's like, well, all right, well, I have a, you know, when I cut that shitty version together, and I was out of money, and I couldn't, you know, it's like, all right, what am I going to do? I'm like, all right, well. Does this beat me? Yeah. And it's like, no. So what will it look like then? I, oh, well, I guess I gotta go find some money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and guess what? I did. And so, so you know, all's with it as well. But uh, yeah, I and mean, ultimately it's, uh, you know, like the early black metal albums, you know, the early punk rock albums, it's like they're, uh, they're, they're loved because they are, uh, you yeah. know, so deeply, uh, you know, personal and imperfect. Like there's nothing slick or expensive about them. It's you know, let's put a boom box and put a towel over it, jam in the garage in front of it. Yep. That's how we're gonna make the early death demos, you know? Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. I mean, the the rawness and the you can feel the rawness uh, in those albums. You can feel it in films. Uh, you can tell when a director is really going to take off and uh, do something special. We saw that with Peter Jackson going from uh, the little things that he did up to Lord of the Rings, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, but, yeah, it's funny. Like, I, I, I've joked about how, like, in some ways, I feel like I, I live in this alternate dimension where the guy who made Evil Dead and the guy who made Bad Taste are like the a triple plus lists right filmmakers. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, like, to this day I'm, I'm baffled that they that off the resume of meet the feebles got lord of the rings that's insane to me you know if, if if anything i think that in some ways and you know it is just a theory but i think that uh gen x grew up uh understanding and appreciating genre of movies more enough that guys like Ramey and Jackson could translate their talent and vision into a triple plus, you know, Hollywood X, Y, Z in kind of a way that like say um, Romero and uh, uh, you know, John Carpenter never quite could like, uh, you know, Carpenter was always, uh, I, you know, big trouble, little China should have been 
the movie that jumped him up doing, you know, Die Hard, you know, whatever, you know, you know big A triple plus oh, yeah. list kind of things, because um, it showed they could do uh, effects and big fight scenes and big action and handle A list stars and that that that, and never quite, you know, and um, and that's not a knock on them. That's actually a knock on the industry that yeah. just looked yeah. at looked at them like I, I mean, you know, I don't know, I don't get this weird stuff. Yeah, you know, the ends. It's like you, know, you cut forward about 30, 40 years, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, how, how could you not?" But yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? No, it's uh, I I feel that to the bone on that stuff. Um, I guess uh, we can start wrapping it up here. I guess uh, uh, my last question for me. I don't know, Clay. You have any more? Um, no, no. I'll let you uh, take us out here, Jason. So. Uh, an Abyss Sinister album, perhaps, from maybe some <laughs> underground musicians. <laughs> you can fill it. Abyss in Easter. Uh, Abyss in e- Easter. <laughs> well, uh, I do have 500 Abyss Sinister t shirts. Oh, right. uh, because Can I, I have at least one, please? In, in, order to, in order to do that merch table scene, I needed t-shirts right and sure. uh dan, dan Gucci knew like a little because he's also a musician so he knew someone who could get uh t-shirts done uh inexpensively but they had to be done like a big lot you know so sure. like i'm just like oh i i, I guess a thousand and so <laughs> I, I i got a thousand t-shirts made so i could get one for one scene in the movie right. the other 999 i'm also just get, i was giving them away to everyone who came to that show that was like kind of one of the prizes it's like please come and be the crowd at this at this free incantation show and oh by the way you also get a free Abbott sister t-shirt yeah and uh, i still have 500 of them they're sitting over there so what i'm trying to do is uh i mean until money starts coming back this way from death metal like i'm still the same broke ass filmmaker that i've <laughs> been for years now so what i on uh my site deathmetalhorrormovie.com you can order your own Abba Sinister t-shirts and they're technically uh, movie props and I'm selling them for 10 bucks because that's how oh, much nice. Shadia was selling them. That's how much Shadia was selling them in the movie. So I couldn't go higher than that, right? Yeah. Uh, and also I'm selling um, copies of the Blu-ray, which I'll sign. Um, so yeah, it's like, oh, uh, say, please, say, you know, what, say it one more time, please. Deathmetalhorrormovie.com. So yes, I, I have, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, they're all in large. Uh, that's so, okay. Uh, that's so okay. All I, death metal fans are fat. So that's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, 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 I here, here's the thing: is like, I, I, the 500 that I've got over there are all in large. So what I have to do is I have to sell off those large shirts before I can justify ordering more there in you know XL, XXL, small, medium, X, Y, Z. You know, so please, if you would like to support the the movie. And if you would like a cheap ass Abba Sinister t shirt, that's technically a movie prop. <laughs> 10 bucks, hit me up on, on the thing, and I'll send you t shirts that say I'm, Abba I'm, Sinister on them. I'm ordering as I'm, we speak. I'm definitely oh my ordering. God. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, Mike, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time out to come here and talk to us. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed. Like I said, death metal. We had a great time watching, and I told you about it, between both of us, we probably watched it like twelve times. So we're wow, endeared man. to the characters. Uh, Fleming is amazing. Uh, Ray is that his name? Ray Goodwin. E. Ray Goodwin, and uh, yeah. he and yeah, yeah, he, he was and, awesome. He, yeah, he and Johnny are all, are both uh, primarily stunt guys, and I I think you can kind of get that that vibe off them. Uh, you know that yeah like, yeah. You know, the, I, throughout the entire production, Ira uh, would be like, uh, "Hey, Mike, how about if I jump up on that thing and run along?" And I'm just like, "I don't." I, 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 I'm like, I, "I'd like to. I'd like to, but we have. I mean, dude, we we have this much time, this much scenes, this much camera. Yeah, you know, I, I'd yeah. love to do all of your ideas, but I, I, I can't." I, yeah. I have to shoot like the basic stuff. <laughs> you know, that, that, it's like hopefully Death Metal Two will have uh, the kind of budget where we can put in all the soup to nuts. But you know, for, for right now, it's like oh, watch watch the first one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> Everybody, the uh, Death Metal is streaming on Tubi now. It is uh, on Amazon Prime. I bought it on yeah. Amazon Prime as well. Um, 
Go buy it. It's only ten bucks, and it's you'll, only ten bucks. You'll you'll want it. Yeah, I promise. Yeah, if you order it through the site, I'll sign it for you and send you a physical copy. Yeah, so, yes, get a physical copy for sure. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this special episode of Cinematic Suffering. We watched Death Metal. We talked to Mike, the director from Death Metal. Go buy some shit from him now. Do it now. <laughs> uh, Do it. Uh, and also, I guess my final word is remember not to take any shit from a guy who yells beans at you. Don't let that get you down, beans! guys. Beans! <laughs> beans! <laughs>